Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Oget. I am an emergency physician and in this educational video we're going to talk about the relationship of alcohol and atrial fibrillation. The specific question is, is there any amount of alcohol that is safe in atrial fibrillation patients? Wine is known for its heart healthy antioxidants. A beer with your bodies can be a great end to a stressful week. But heart health can begin to suffer when you drink and rhythm irregularities like atrial fibrillation don't mix well with alcohol. There is an undeniable link between alcohol and atrial fibrillation. In fact, there is a medical condition called holiday heart, in which normal people who drink in binges, even if they don't routinely consume alcohol, can then find themselves in atrial fibrillation a few days after drinking. Thus the term holiday heart. It seems that even moderate alcohol consumption can trigger AFib symptoms, turn paroxysmal atrial fibrillation to persistent atrial fibrillation, and make it more likely that symptoms will recur after a heart operation. Doctors agree that any cardiovascular benefits that come with light drinking don't extend to atrial fibrillation patients. It is difficult to know how alcohol will affect your symptoms. A lot of it depends on the amount and frequency of your drinking as well as your medical history and medical regimen. So, should you avoid drinking altogether? Well, here are some things to consider before you make this call. Let's talk about the alcohol's impact on the heart. Although experts are still unsure how exactly alcohol interacts with heart function, there are some theories to explain the negative symptoms like heart palpitations and an erratic heartbeat. One has to do with the vagal nerve. This nerve runs through the neck and seems to respond to alcohol. And the more you drink, the more vagal nerve activity or stimulation. The spike in vagal nerve response can spark an atrial fibrillation event. AFib symptoms can also come on when your fluid levels aren't optimal, like when you're dehydrated. Alcohol can easily lead to this situation since it's a diuretic. It makes you eliminate more fluid through the source of the kidneys, therefore urination. At best, dehydration is uncomfortable. At worst, it can stress your organs, deplete your mineral levels, and ultimately trigger atrial fibrillation. Just as different medications can interfere with each other, alcohol can interact with the drugs you take to manage your AFib. Vitamin K antagonists like Coumadin or warfarin are particularly problematic when they meet alcohol. These blood thinning medications can increase your risk of bleeding when you drink alcohol. So alcohol use can also cause warfarin to build up in the body, which may bring on another set of complications. So what are the guidelines for patients with AFib? Since there seems to be a direct connection between AFib and alcohol, the American Heart Association recommends that if you don't drink already, don't start. However, some people may be able to drink now and then as long as their health history and heart symptoms agree with it. The key is to speak to your doctor or healthcare provider about any concerns and be honest about your symptoms. This will help determine if you can have a drink or if you do better with avoiding alcohol altogether. As with a lot of things in life, find a balance. Heavy drinking and AFib are a bad combination. Three or more drinks a day can significantly increase your risk of an episode. And for every drink on top of that, your risk climbs another 8%. If you drink moderately, two drinks a day for men, one drink a day for women, you might be all right, but your doctor may still suggest that you cut down a bit. If you want to include alcohol in your diet without drastically raising your risk of atrial fibrillation reaction, then keep the following tips in mind. Take drink-free days. Binge drinking is definitely a bad idea, but even moderate drinking every day could contribute to atrial fibrillation. Experts recommend taking two or three dry days in a week to relieve the stress on your liver and your heart. Is water too boring for you? It is to me. Then fill a box with a variety of herbal teas and keep it on the counter so there's a selection of flavors to choose from, which can keep things interesting. 
Now you must pay close attention to your numbers. When you live with a heart condition, you need to pay extra close attention to your own body. This means not only watching for your symptoms, but also checking key levels. Since alcohol increases blood pressure, which can interfere with your heart function, commit to using a blood pressure monitor when you have a drink or two. If the numbers are high, that's a sign you've got to switch back to water. Second, top off your fluids and minerals. Alcohol encourages your kidneys to draw water from your tissues and pass it out of your body in the form of urine. But you're losing more than water. Important minerals like sodium and potassium are crucial for proper organ function. They will drain out as well. Without this electrolytes, heart function will falter. So you'll want to top your levels off with water and nutritious food and minerals. Sports drinks can be helpful, but they contain a great deal of sugar, so go easy on those as well. Third, pass on the nightcap. Good sleep directly impacts your stress levels and the frequency and severity of atrial fibrillation episodes. It follows that poor sleep can cause health problems and alcohol can easily disrupt natural sleep patterns. An evening drink, a nightcap, can calm you down in the moment, but it will boost your metabolism during the night while your body is trying to process the energy. That could translate into lots of tossing and turning and more uncomfortable symptoms when you wake up in the morning. Fourth, moderation is key. Alcohol intake clearly affects your chances of experiencing atrial fibrillation symptoms, so it makes good sense to take steps to reduce your drinking. So why not take the opportunity to examine your whole diet and see what else could you do to adjust it? After making a couple of additions or subtractions, you could start to notice some pleasant changes in your energy levels and quality of life in a matter of weeks. If you have AFib and you drink, we've discussed the things that can improve or can worsen the symptoms. We gave you a couple tips and things to do if you have atrial fibrillation and you drink alcohol. But it's important not only to monitor your blood pressure as suggested in the video content, but also monitor your heart rate. If you have paroxysmal AFib, that means you go in and out of atrial fibrillation. Therefore, it would be good for you to know if you are or not on atrial fibrillation. As discussed in other videos, not everybody gets symptoms when they are on atrial fibrillation. So it's important you have an objective way to determine if you are or not. So consider purchasing a device like the Cardia device. This device can provide you with a one single lead EKG and let you know both your heart rate and whether or not you are in atrial fibrillation. If you are unsure and you're having symptoms of, you can always take the strip and send it to your doctor or medical professional or family friend who can read it and tell you if you are indeed on atrial fibrillation or not. By doing daily EKGs, you can monitor your heart's health by knowing on a day-to-day -day basis if you're going in or out of atrial fibrillation and whether or not your heart rate's being controlled. So I highly suggest that you have atrial fibrillation, that you have a device such as this to monitor your heart health. Keep a log of your heart rates and EKG traces so when you go to your doctor, you can discuss the results with him or her. Again, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojeda, and it was a pleasure to bring you this educational content about atrial fibrillation and alcohol use. I hope you find it useful, so don't forget to like the video, comment below, and let me know what else you would like me to talk in future videos. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for watching, and for other videos, go to www.dr.er.tv.